Hi guys, it's Diamond again bringing you a video about Battlefield 5's gameplay. Now, yesterday I posted a Reddit topic entitled A Preliminary Assessment of Battlefield 5's Alpha's New Weapon Mechanics and Comparison to Previous Titles. This assessment was purely a on-desk, on-paper assessment based on what we know what happens when a game almost spread. But something very interesting happened. The core gameplay designer goes by the name of Florian or Drunk Z3. I'm sorry if I butchered the name, <laughs> but I appreciate you posting here if you're watching this. Basically, he went into detail on how the gameplay actually worked. Now, during my analysis, I did do some frame by frame analysis, but it was a bit hard to tell. And I did notice that the gameplay was... That, well, basically there was more going on than what I initially thought. It wasn't a case of simply full autoing and doing well at any range. So without further ado, let's go through what he said. And here I'm quoting. The values that we've had at EA Play have changed quite a lot since then. And we are constantly iterating. Yeah, that's what I expected. So the second point. We still have spread increase on our weapons. With the exception of SLRs and bolt action rifles. Now, Battlefield 1 does not have spread on bolt action rifles, so that's not new. But SLRs is interesting. There is no spread increase per shot. Now, you may think, oh, that's going to turn them into a laser. We'll go into that in a, another point. But basically, remember that in Battlefield 1, if you notice, the performance of the SLR is not really dictated much by spread increase per shot after the time to kill 2.0, since SIPS was halved but rather the horizontal recoil which, which limits its maximum fire rate at various ranges. There are exceptions to this like the 1906 at let's say 100 meters, but even at that point even the vertical recoil becomes annoying, so that's a bit of a tangent I suppose. But I'm not really concerned on no spread increase on SLRs, but there is spread increase on other weapons, which is interesting. We do not have specifics on this, but from what I see in the gameplay, Spread increase does seem to exist, particularly when the recoil becomes more violent, like after the fifth shot on the STG-44. But of course these values, as I said earlier, as, well, as he said earlier, these are just preliminary values and are not representative of the final product. We also have, very importantly, a first shot spread multiplier. This was introduced in Battlefield 1 and it killed off microbursting. If you don't remember, microbursting was a BF4 mechanic where one could click fast without much rhythm or little rhythm in the case of more competitive players and make a weapon useful at every range. Usually that weapon is an assault rifle because, well, why use anything else? Because you have the medkit and the most versatile weapon in the game. But I'm very happy that FSSM is still here. It's actually one of my it was one of my biggest concerns with Battlefield 5, but I'm glad to see it here. We still have a fair shot recoil multiplier, that's not too surprising, it's a good mechanic. It's very good at balancing out weapons with a high rate of fire. And also making uh, burst fire weapons usable, because usually fair shot recoil multipliers for bursts are lower, like Battlefield 1's MPA experimented, and also present on the third shot. Meaning your initial two shots are actually more accurate. Now this is where one of the biggest similarities to BF1 comes in. We still want to respect engagement ranges, although we can allow that to be pushed out of the box a bit with firing discipline. This is already the case with BF1, but if they're pushing it a bit further with Battlefield 5, then that's fantastic. If one really learns the weapon, then one should be able to engage a bit out of their engagement ranges. Not optimally, of course, but usably. Kind of like, for example, the Auto 35 is still decent and hip firing up close, even though it's not the best option out there. But that's a bit of a tangent. This is what I observed from the gameplay, to be honest. The weapons all had their unique damage models and characteristics similar to BF1. Even more so in some cases, like the medium machine gun is a completely different category and it's quite interesting. To quote Florian again. Now, when it comes to weapon systems, I will not give too many details, but worth noting. The spread is handled in a completely different way compared to previous Battlefield games, hence the reason why you can't read it on a video. So yes, spread is in, still in the game, and rightfully so, because it's a good way of balancing things. However, recoil for automatic weapons has a pattern, 
or a tendency. This means that it is not as super predictable as I thought. It's more like CSGO where you have a trend and... Well, I think people are referring to a trend when they say predictable recall patterns. I don't think they're expecting someone to compensate for every single shot in a burst. Because that is literally impossible to do. Because, come on, you can't judge a recall pattern. You can't compensate for something firing at 600 RPM. You can't even do it for 200 RPM. So, you can't, you can't do that on horizontal recoil. So that's interesting. What's even more interesting is that vertical recoil does not increase in a linear way. Now, what I'm taking away from this is that kind of like how LMGs in BF1 have negative spread to which they have a bullet till they reach minimum spread, BF5's non-linear vertical recoil could mean that at a certain bullet, for example the STG at 5 shots, will have an exponentially increasing vertical recoil. This basically means it will accumulate and will not, will not, this basically means that it will not just accumulate, but it would increase and increase and increase in a non-linear way. This is, the last part is obviously just conjecture on my part, but I wouldn't be surprised if it works like that. Earlier I mentioned that SLRs have no spread increase, which is fine, but the lack of linear vertical recoil means that spam firing SLRs may actually not be viable at all because you are using a precision weapon and having an unpredictable exponential increase in vertical recoil is not something conducive to consistency. This of course depends on the actual values being used because if it's not too low then it doesn't really matter. I meant not too high. And of course there are much more changes that he cannot talk about. Well in general I am extremely satisfied with this reply. Basically, all the concerns I have with Battlefield 5's gunplay have crouch rolled out of the window. I'm very much looking forward to play the game. Battlefield 5 has many, many, many interesting changes and mechanics that I can't wait to try out. Ma even the fact that maps are banned by the game mode, finally. Perhaps we'll see less throwaway maps on, for example, Sinai Desert on Rush. It doesn't work. It doesn't work properly, anyway. So I'm very, very hopeful for the game and then even much more hyped than I was previously. If they can retain Battlefield 1's complex weapon mechanics and do not dumb it down to BF3, BF4's mag dump or micro burst meta, then we'll have a more tactile game that replicates BF1's mechanics but in a more responsive way. And hopefully we can see the end of people complaining about RBD. RBD is not a thing. Please stop saying it, it's just called spread. But whatever, that's another tangent. It's been Dan Minigun, and you've been watching. Well, I forgot to stop saying that, it's just been Dan Minigun. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on probably Frontlines Battlefield 1, and hopefully Battlefield 5 very soon. I really hope I get alpha access to this game. If I do, I will be certainly diving into these mechanics and perhaps comparing them to Battlefield 1.